Today on Media Litter Sandwich, we have Andre Batts. What do you do? I'm the creator of Urban Style Comics Universe. I have a character, Dreadlocks, as well as Black Watch, Jihad AD, and Queen Nubia. <laughs> Welcome to Media Layer Sandwich, where media creators are sitting around and talking about the world of creating media and things around it, the things that you drop and forget. We pick up, we throw some bologna, maybe some mustard, I don't know, maybe, you know, whatever you want to throw on your sandwich, and well, we eat it, apparently, because I'm fat. Hey, same here, man. <laughs> I'm fatter than you, man. <laughs> I'm Toden from Toden.com and, of course, YouTube.com slash Toden K. With me is Mark from CrazyMark.com. William from AllAboutWilliam.com. Joining us today, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Andre Batts of Urban Style Comics and Motor City Black Age of Comics. Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm almost used to people rattling off like five or six companies by now. <laughs> you get those entrepreneurs on, yeah, I'm from this and this and this and this and this. And what else does my LinkedIn page say? <laughs> yeah, I'm very humble. <laughs> ah, but your art is very, uh, it's extremely good. Very extremely good. Okay, so you're humble. So I'm going to have to pull a couple things out you, of you. You may have to. Uh, you recently won some kind of award. Mm -hmm. I won the uh, Spirit of Detroit Award, which was presented by uh, uh, Keep Line Village, as well as uh, the Councilwoman of uh, Detroit. And it was for my uh, service in the community for over 20 years. And I received this award right behind uh Arvell Jones and Keith Pollard. Oh man, that's awesome, man! Right, right up there I, I with Arvell and it. Keith. You know when it <laughs> happened, I, I was in the audience, like eating pop popcorn during the time. You, of, you uh, didn't know? No. <laughs> it was during wow. The time of uh, Black Panther the premiere, mm -hmm. you know, I was invited by Kimberline Village, and you know, I'm sitting there eating my popcorn, and I heard Arvell, I heard Keith Pollard. And I'm eating my popcorn. Next thing you know, I heard Andre Bats. And I'm like, I asked, <laughs> Did someone mess up? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? I think right. I parked in the right spot. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. so I asked, uh, do they need help behind? Oh, great. Now what do I have to do? <laughs> That's what I was thinking for a minute. But then I had asked uh, Charles uh, Patrick, Patrick, you know, Jackson, did they just call my name? And he was like, uh, yes. Yeah, they just called your name. And I was like... <laughs> Then they called it again. I was like, oh, they did call my name. I went down there, had my coat on, my hat on. <laughs> you know, I'm just no, not prepared at all. But needless to say, I, I really uh, appreciated the award, the recognition, because I have been doing dreadlocks for a long time. And um, I've been, you know, really at it, you know, just because of the fact that I love comics. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, so so it's uh, what do they they mentioned uh, dreadlocks is a part of it. Yes, as a matter of fact, they rep, rep, uh, represented uh, you know, dreadlocks as well as uh, urban style comics, which mm -hmm. is dre dreadlocks is an urban style comics brand, and which is me, of course, and um, that's what they mentioned. And when they mentioned it, I was like, wow, you know, it's all on the award and everything. You know, my name, the dreadlocks, uh, urban style comics, twenty years of service, and everything. You know, I couldn't beat that. And, you know, I was just, it, even to this day, I'm still, you know, rattled and, you know. You know. <laughs> I still think they messed up. Yeah, yeah, what right. what you, oh, no. What well, you're I'm, I'm checking out some of the I'm stories shocked. in here, man. The art, this is on top, Oh, the man. art is amazing. Andre, you, and you drew all this. You're, Actually, you're with that right there, I did a colored version of it, and I mm -hmm. did the story, and I, I did the colors to it. So everything, Dude, check out his colors. They, so, they, they pop like crazy. So They're, everything you have in here, like like the cover here, you mm -hmm. did that. Yes, I colored that one, yes. That is sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, the interiors, I did all the interiors as well. Mm -hmm. That's some sweet stuff, man. I mean, what got you into uh, creating comic books? I mean, well, when you were a little kid. Who inspired you? Stan Lee, of course, you know, okay, Stan Lee. <laughs> he inspired everyone, you know, mm -hmm. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. You know, I grew up drawing, you know, drawing comics, or not necessarily drawing comics. I was drawing all types of images, you know. Um, we had uh, album covers, you know, comics. You know, I had, you know, Rick James had a, a cover, you know, from one of his first CD, uh, not CDs, I'm going to go way back, albums. Right. <laughs> Busting out. 
and I used to love this cover. I used to just draw it over and over till I got it right. And you wow. had, uh, you know, you know, uh, Parliament Funkadelics. They always had some. Oh some man, sweet art, yeah, they you know. Oh yeah. I mean, didn't Bootsy have that comic book kind of thing going <laughs> exactly. on? Exactly. So that a lot yeah. of that influenced me as far as me, my artist. Concerned. You're actually missing something today what that that it? that I uh, still associate with uh, George Clinton or. Um, and that is the the dreadlocks. The locks. Oh. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they don't recognize me or whatever. I did a show <laughs> back in Chicago when I first cut them, and everyone was looking for Andre Bats. They seen the guy at the booth. But they didn't know that that guy was me mm -hmm. because I cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no, no. So it's because you were the uh, other cons before, man. Right. I'd seen the dreads and stuff. Right, exactly. And then all of a sudden, man, like, wow. I mean, did you donate uh, locks for, of love for kids, uh, cancer kids or well, anything like that? No, I didn't donate my locks at all. I kept them in a bag. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of energy have, have, has, has transpired, you know, with the, um, the locks, you know, good and bad. So just put it all in the bag so it was time for a new... Actually, old look, because I had, you know, short hair a long time right. ago. So I just went back to that, you know, and I'm happy with it. Uh, now people are starting to realize that I am Andre Bass now. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of looking for the locks, they just look for me. Well, man, you could have had the Rasta baby running around with the donation. <laughs> you know? Well, all that, it's the branding. I mean, yes, right. baby I mean when I started putting my hair up in Liberty Spikes, uh, I never thought that it was going to be like a thing where when I don't put up the, the Liberty Spikes, mm. people wouldn't recognize me. Oh. I was like, I wear the same... Not the same bandana. I have a few different bandanas, mm -hmm. but I wear the same, you know, icon on the bandanas. I have custom made bandanas. I wear them all the time, you know. So if you're looking for for me to peacock a little bit, if you're looking for like a symbol for me, it's my, my actual icon. But no, they're looking for the hair because it stands right. out more. Dude, yeah, <laughs> the, the time he shaved, that's when he vanished. Man. Oh, 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 yeah. the oh beard. my god, don't yeah. say that. Can't yeah. ever shave again. Totally left don't. town. Oh man, people. Uh, uh, podcasts I didn't even know uh, knew who I was started going dude I miss Toden. All we got is Foden. Like, they started calling me Foden until I grew back yeah. my beard. Well, I'm looking at it in like a, a form of astral projection for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my locks disappear. I'm just astral projection into a, into your world. <laughs> you know, oh, right on. Okay, you see right me, on. But you don't at the same uh -oh. time. <laughs> so, you know... So dreadlocks, you work on that for twenty years. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us some about this. We've been working on dreadlocks, like I say, since um, uh, ninety three is actually when I started designing mm -hmm. the character, mm -hmm. and I actually put out my first book in ninety six. And uh, by me reading several different comics, you know, Mar Marvel was my my thing or whatever. You know, Marvel, okay. a few DC, but for the most part, it was always Marvel, Doctor Strange, Silver Surfer. Thor, you know, little Spider-Man, just everything Marvel put out. But the ones I named first, those are the ones I really concentrated on the most. But, you know, after a while, you know, I started, you know, reading, reading. I love comics or whatever. I just didn't see enough representation as far mm -hmm. as, you know, of my community and people that do comics like me or whatever. There's several of us that do comics, but none of our stuff was ever getting out. You know, we would go to the different shows and present our work stories or whatever to the different artists or whoever you know the artists can't really give you a plug they're just there sitting down getting autographs or whatever giving out right. autographs but we're thinking that you know maybe they'll help us out some but needless to say you know i had uh went up to a, a comic store uh, in ferndale at the time it was uh owned and operated by todd johnson and i just so happened to hear the word that larry Strowman was going to be there so I went there and met them, and they gave out a couple of good, good words and some other words, you know, letting me know that, uh, you know, that I had potential. Mm -hmm. So by them letting me know that I had the potential, I just concentrated more on my craft as far as the art is concerned. I designed the character even more. And so I ended up uh, coming up with dreadlocks because I was really into, you know, reggae music. You know, hip-hop culture has always been there for me. Uh, and I spoke on, you know, George Clinton, uh, you know, all that good music. Right, right. All that really influenced me. But as far as the, the reggae music, uh, listening to particular groups like Steel Pulse, uh, 
uh, who's that? Black Guru and uh, Bob Marley, of course. Yeah. Oh, man, you, you gotta know. throw some Peter Tosh in there. Yeah, dude. Peter, of course, <laughs> Yellow Peter Man. Tosh, Yellow, yeah. Yellow Man, most definitely. You know, you oh, don't yeah. hear much about Yellow Man. Oh, man. It's a shocker they <laughs> threw that out there. Yeah, but yeah those, those type of groups, you know, they kind of influenced me or whatever as far as uh, developing my stories a lot more. Right. You know, because they were, you know, like uh, political. You know what I mean? They, they really had messages in their music. You know, that's what I like to hear, messages in the music. I don't like to just hear music. You know what I mean? Music right, is right. good. <laughs> See, now I'm, I'm looking at this here, and not only do you have comic books, but you have actual video and DVD. Now, these are more than just posables, like the old Marvel in the 60s, you know? Right. These are actual, like like the DC comics or whatever, mm -hmm. or a regular Marvel did their animation. Mm -hmm. So these are full animated figures, you know. They're computer-generated animated figures. Actually, right? Yeah. that right there is a, an animated movie of Dreadlocks. It's like 45 minutes. It was Video done. version is different than the audio version. Mm -hmm. So it in was, other words, you're going to see basically the same quality here as like mm -hmm. if you went out to, like, say, for example, you go to Best Buy, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, oh, they have the new DC Superman and Batman. Batman animated movie out. Correct. You're going to see something like that. Yes. Wow, that is... Dude, no. man, I'm walking out yeah. of here with that. Now, you said you... <laughs> hey, I bought that. No, I didn't buy that. Um, I, I, I almost... No, I did buy that. Yeah, did I did buy, buy that. that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I bought that one. That one's mine. <laughs> Oh man, I still need to watch that. My nephew's B Rad is, is yelling at B Rad. B, he changed his name again. Was it uh, Third Hand B Fourteen? Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, we're sponsored by Turtle Trinkets. Turtle check them out. They trinkets. do not. They do not have an online store, but they're at many conventions. You can always check them out on Facebook at Turtle Trinkets, and make sure you hit up Dave and told us that you heard his, uh, heard us talking about them. Uh, which, of course, you know uh, Dave from Turtle Trinkets because you guys mm -hmm. go to a lot of conventions together. Right. Turtle Trinkets, unlimited, unlimited fidget spinners, ones you'll never find. And anywhere. also earrings and magnets and all a bunch of pop culture. Specialty stuff. necklaces. Check them out. <laughs> Only he's, found. he's got some weird necklaces too. He's got some oversized necklaces. <laughs> it's like. I, oh, I, he's I, got I, some. Oh, yeah. You never know what he's going to have. One day I go oh. there and he has like a four foot Michelangelo, which he did sell. And then another day I go in there, he has like, uh, he's, he's, you got just got to check him out. You never know what he's mm. going to have. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of conventions, mm -hmm. uh, Motor City, Black Age of Comics. Okay. Tell us about it. <laughs> See, well, you is something you got kind of drag out. What, what, you know? I thought you was gonna ask me something else, but um, needless to say, yeah, you know, Motor City Black Age of Comics. You know, I, I started that, you know, based off of some other guys that was doing uh, conventions out in Chicago um, mm -hmm. and Philadelphia. Uh, the Black Age in Chicago started it back in '93. So it, there's a bigger, it's not just Motor City, Black Age of Comics. Right. There's a Black Age of Comics, and then you just have like just a chapter of city. it. Correct. Just about okay. every city. Um, mm -hmm. Philadelphia cool. is where I, I built, you know, um, the Motor City Black Age off of their uh, their program. You know, the way they set it up, you know, I was amazed by it. But they gave me a call one day and just said, hey, you know, um, why don't you connect with this this brother named uh, Abiyomi Ali Allen and do a um, convention there? And I was like, um, I don't have time to do a convention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm doing comic books. I want to go to a show, set up, mm -hmm. sell my comics, and call it a day, go home, and I'm happy with that. So I went on and did it. It was the first year, and um, we were at a bookstore called Shrine of Black Madonna, and uh, I think Arvell came down there, him, Keith Pollard, and maybe two other people came to the show. And that was it. Okay. The first show, we only had like maybe four or five people total at the show. Oh, man. But needless to say, it was in, in February, so right. we figured that would be the case. Well, we figured it's that. It's cold. Yeah, it could be snowing. Michigan. It could be. It, it's, yeah. you know, most first year shows, especially in the. It, it's. But, it's surprising if you get more than a couple hundred people, especially for a very small show. It, but needless to say, you know, I had got some very, you know, positive words from Arvell Jones. Yeah. And I decided to go ahead and keep doing it. Yeah, so, you came back. Right. Mm -hmm. So at that point, 
you know, I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this convention and still do my books at the same time. You know, I started uh, getting a lot of freelancers on board to work with me as far as the uh, comics are concerned. I continue writing the stories and doing the colors. And I started bringing different guys together, you know, in Detroit, because I wanted mm -hmm. actually to focus on Detroit artists, or not necessarily just Detroit artists, but people in the metro Detroit area. Right. So that being said, it could be anybody at the show, uh, because at most shows like uh, the Motor City Comic Con, I hope I can say that, right? I don't right. care. Go yeah, ahead. Okay, good, my man. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Needless to say, Motor City Comic Con, when I would go to those shows, and even when I did the show, the representation wasn't there. Once again, just like with comics, mm -hmm. the representation. It's more about who can pay. Yeah, but the thing about <laughs> and, it. And not get certain people upset, because we actually know more than a handful of people that's been kicked out of Motor City yeah, Comic. I believe it. I'm sure you do, I, too. Yeah, I believe it, because <laughs> I know people that can pay. But once again, you know, the representation isn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, we have three people there that look like me, you know, Hispanic, whatever. And everybody else look like you guys. Nothing against, you know, y'all oh, because, you know. They have long you know, hair? Like, uh, no. no, no. <laughs> Video most version no, different than the audio like version. This, or shorter. Right. No, that, <laughs> so. uh, Andre's right. They kicked me out of there, like, right quick. They yeah, always did one time. But it's yep. like, you know, you go and you put out your promo for something and even if it looks like something you wrote on a piece of paper oh i know what you the did eighth, ninth, there's signs <laughs> telling you degree, not to do that you know <laughs> oh i know what you did i know why they yelled at you stop it there's a sign saying do if you're gonna advertise your stuff don't put it here you know you gotta go talk to the organizer because mm -hmm. i know a and then you just people. threw it down but i i, I they <laughs> should have a, a free promotion table they absolutely yeah, should, yeah, they should have but they right. have signs saying you, you did that uh several other but, people we know did that yeah i wasn't the only one there oh are some no people really do it time. every single all yeah, the time yeah there's some like they have you know, to have a volunteer watching it because people will start throwing their own promotions i right. know why they have that or else, be, or else it's going to be covered in and and just and random wants, stuff. Yeah, yeah. you I mean, should ask yeah. for permission anyway. E exactly. You, yeah, but if it's a promotions table, don't you yeah. figure? But it wasn't an open promotions table. It was oh, a okay. I, I I don't know if it was a sponsored or not. It's but they want to have some kind of quality control. Yeah, they they want to have control. I'm not, I'm not saying I I think it's a great idea I, I, or I endorse it. I'm just saying that's what it is. And there's signage telling you that. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. If you can't read a sign, effort. how are you going to promote your stuff? It it's just one of those they, 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 they just want to make sure you're not advertising something that's otherwise illegal. Right. right. And, you would and, think that. Yeah. And people, you know. and we've seen <laughs> that, you know. Oh, I have. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Been, you know, handed stuff at cons mm. like, oh, you can't hand that to the general public. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Whoa. I've been handing that stuff out at shows that are considered kid shows. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, just not everyone that goes there promoting themselves realizes it's a kid show. That's true. Um, they're like, oh, I thought this was an artist show. Well, it is, but it's a family friendly artist show. Right, which Not that so kind of artist. <laughs> you know, those shows like that aren't so much art as it is fanfare. Mm. And fanfare is usually a family thing on a weekend. And if you're spending hundreds upon hundreds just to go there to get an autograph, from a big star, then of course there's going to be families and screaming little kids running around. Yeah, but you're mm. promoting. You're usually not spending hundreds of dollars for a VIP signage. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you're you're going to go to another trade show. Yeah. You know, it's like once. Yeah. Usually somebody will make the mistake just once, and then after that they go, "Yeah, hey, I'm not going back there again." Yeah. You know. Well, anyway, so Motor City Comic Con, the big Comic Con type that local of Detroit, was not for you. <laughs> or at least no, you didn't well, feel. You didn't feel well, like it it was a fit. It's for me in a sense because it's the comic genre. Right. In that sense, it's for me. Mm -hmm. But as far as representation, it wasn't <laughs> for me. Well, if and you're, the, yeah, well, if you're there, then you're showing more representation. Exactly. So with that being said, I created my own event, mm -hmm. which was the Motor City Black Age of Comics. And, right on. And, you know, and I invited everyone out. And I've got caught flack from several individuals, but not enough. But mm -hmm. needless to say, people come out, everyone's set up, you can be whoever, set up for the show. 
sell your products and have a good time. We're going to have, you know, the hip hop music in the background, you know, house uh, music, techno. Yep. Yeah, uh, um, shout by. out to um, um, uh, Detroit Funk. Uh, um, I, I'm, I forgot the name. Come on, help me out. Um, I, I know I, I, I know his real name. But I'm trying to remember uh, his thing. He was a DJ in, in, the, uh, in the other room. In the other room. Um, Detroit hmm. Funk something. Funk Factory? Funk Factory, that's yeah, it. Not. Yeah, he was one of our first guests on the show. He was oh, on good, like good. episode like five or six or something like good, that. Yeah. Matthew. Yeah. Matt yes. Yep. yep. Matt and and you know, his he, his cartoons are <laughs> insane. Oh, wait. That was the psychedelic stuff. Man. Right. Yeah. His cartoons oh, were insane. Oh, that was the psychedelic stuff. And you can go back to medialittersandwich.com and look it up. It's up there, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, it's on there. And uh, uh Brian Dundas from Evil Ducky was a guest on that episode where we showed the clip where we interviewed um, you know show, um, um, Funkadelic you can um, go there for your psychedelic trip yeah it was mm-hmm. oh man uh, yeah his cartoons uh, some of them were on YouTube I'm, I, if you ever watch how did I, I I described it as if you're watching like Adult Swim in the middle of the night and you don't think it's weird right. enough for you <laughs> then go check out this guy's stuff mm-hmm. it is, <laughs> not, it's good and you need mushrooms if, if you never watch cartoon sushi or you miss cartoon sushi for MTV then go watch this stuff peyote for the mm-hmm. eyes but as, as you can see, he was at the event. I have oh, individuals yeah. like him at the event. Uh, there's several artists uh, that's at the event. We have uh, T.I. Walker. We mm-hmm. have uh, Mark Dudley. Uh, we Cam Comics Sa- was there, yeah, which Cam, was also on the show. Fantastic. Cam Comics, yep. Cameron Reynolds. We have, uh, you, you know, with Michigan Motherfuckers, as a matter of fact. That's the name of his, <laughs> oh, one yeah. of his yep. stories. He got one, one of coming them, out yep. soon. And oh, we yeah. got, uh, you know, Mike Watson, Arvell Jones. This year, you know, uh, Larry Strowman came by. He was at the event this year. He was a special guest. Um, but like I said, it's a show for everyone. You know, it was on Wayne State campus. Students can come out. You know, it doesn't make any difference what they look like because yeah. it's not promoted that way. Oh, it's fantastic. I had a blast. Well, I'm glad I, you I, I was, did. I'm glad. Yeah, I was there yeah. almost completely by accident because right. I, we were set up. To to do a booth and mm-hmm. to do some presentations at right. another Comic Con. It was that. canceled last minute last due minute. to some family issues. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and then we're like, "Hey, we're coming out." And I know people. I know your phone was blowing up. Uh, yes, it was. I had several <laughs> people calling me about that particular event, mm-hmm. and at that time, I couldn't provide the space for everyone. Right. You know, um, I told them, you know, we're all because usually with my event, <clears throat> excuse me. Usually with my event, they they sell out at a certain time frame. So at that point, unless someone decides they're not coming to the show, then I could uh, make it available. But at the Mm -hmm. last minute, you know, like I had gotten like 10 calls. Within like the 48 hours of the event. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. two days of the event. I was like, wow, you know, sorry, you know, I'll see what happens. (laughs) But, you know, I can't really help you at this point well, right uh, andre 2018 where's the next venue going to be where are you going to have the well this year i'm doing something a little bit different um the venue is still going to be wayne state for the november event um but i'm doing a, a smaller event what they call a mini con at a place in kibbalan village who sponsored the um the award the spirit right. of detroit award uh we're going to do something with them I think uh, it's June 23rd. Okay. You know, just to build up towards um, okay. the Motor City Black Age of Comics. You know, because right now we have the hype from a uh, Black Panther movie. And so we're building off of that right, right. now. Now, do you have any education? Any? Did you ever go to college or? No. Well, I went to Wayne State for about a year, but okay. you know, I got fed up with that after the year. Okay. So that was it for, okay. as far as college is concerned. <laughs> okay. I, I had one person, I'm like, hey, what's a question you wish people asked you more? And they was like, no one asks about my education. So now I wonder about yeah. it. Especially because, man, you you know, you design these characters and Right. They're so fa- you designed the characters on the on the cartoon as well, and they look so fantastic. I was wondering if you you know if you had any education background for Not some of these design. programs. You know, um, as far as uh, with Photoshop, yeah. I actually, when I first started uh, doing Photoshop, um, one of the guys that worked with me, Christopher Irvin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was going to Wayne State. I'm not Wayne State. Sorry, he was going to Michigan State. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, we used to go up there like every week, and he would always show me something different with Photoshop and his Illustrator. And back then it was Cork Express before we got an Illustrator. <laughs> and, uh, and I started, yeah. Yeah. you know, self-educating myself on right. Photoshop. So. And this is before YouTube. This is for the mm -hmm. modern age right, of exactly. the internet. There is some stuff out there in visual tutorial form, but not mm -hmm. not so, not not a lot. Andre, most of the art you're uh, working on in, in here is uh, created in Photoshop. Then the cover is all Photoshop. Okay. Okay. Mm, that's all Photoshop. Everything. Sweet. The colors are mostly uh, Photoshop. The uh, pencils and inks. Okay. The original work. That's all done in exactly that pen pencils and ink. And then after that. Photoshop does the, all the colorings and illustrators okay. with the wording. Okay. Sweet. Oh, man. This is so, so you self-taught yourself. I, I want to keep hearing the story of how, <laughs> how you self-taught illustrator and Photoshop. Well, well you could say self-taught for some people is, you know, we just practice every day. Right. Uh, but in order to self-teach yourself um, these different programs, you have to read on them as well. That's what I mean by mm -hmm. self-taught. It's not just practicing. It's about reading what can you do better, right? you know, as far as your colors are concerned. And, and in today's age, with all the tutorials, you're not learning one way to do things. Correct. You're learning, like, four or five different ways to do things. Right. Well, nowadays, you know, YouTube is just, you know, blowing up the, 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 wor the world wide web with tutorials. Right. You know, but... Gotta think yeah, back not then. just yeah, not just YouTube. There's a billion things out there. Just right. generic, you know, right. YouTube itself is is, is yeah, huge. That's a question mm -hmm. I have. How many tutorials do you have to go through till you find the one that really works for you? Well, you started yeah. before <laughs> yeah, YouTube. I, well, that's what I was going to say. I didn't know I really have those tutorials. If yeah. you wanted what to find anything online, he had to hear a bunch of screeching first. Right, yeah. exactly. Back he, then, he had you know, to go through a thing called a rings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man. The tutorials weren't out back then. Web you know, we would read on right. certain well, things and whatever. Yeah. And, you know, then I would go try and different things from different books that I would read. But, but I'm talking about these days when you want to find out some sort of trick on uh, Photoshop for Illustrator, for InDesign. To be honest, I don't even look at those tutorials anymore. At this oh, okay. Point. Not the, you know, the ones that came out after the fact. You know, because <laughs> now I feel that I have it now. So it's nothing yeah. new that they could actually well, teach you. Well, do you upgrade right your on. software? That's the only thing. Now, that may have something new. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, the last few upgrades with uh, Premiere, mm -hmm. um, I, I had to go find, like, hey, I used to know how to make titles right in yeah. Premiere. That changes. Now I don't. What happened? Yeah. Like, they changed everything well, about the titles when well, it came to Well, with something like that. You, you might know, lose, I don't know, uh, was it, uh, yeah. what's that one tool? The pen tool. A lot of people were upset when they changed the pen tool on Photoshop and... <laughs> I w I'm a little upset with the lasso to well not lasso the wand. I'm upset yeah. with that how you have yeah. to drag it from one area and put it here in order to use it. I don't like yeah. that. But needless to say now, you know, with Photoshop and the way it's set up, you know, it's real easy. If you already know Photoshop, whenever they present these tools to you in the new programs or the new mm -hmm. software versions, it's easy because you already know how to work yeah. it anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yeah, again, I'm looking at these. Are Where do you have your comic books distributed? I mean, how far out of Michigan have you distributed them, or do people have to go online? And Well, basically, online, we're a wide web. You know, mm -hmm. I've had people order my books as far as Spain, uh, uh, Philippines, uh, Japan, England. That's just off uh, your website, or you can go off of Amazon? Right or? on my website. I do okay. everything off my website. I don't believe in having a middleman. Okay. But I've had people challenge me saying that I should have these middlemen like Comixology, uh, Amazon. It's and just all more storefront. It's it's easier That's all to it be is. found. It's it, easier to be found. The, the, it, it is in one degree, mm -hmm. but in another, it's not because they're so cluttered up and full of so many different titles on there. Unless That's you're particularly true, but it does for. it does help though. I mean, I order. You know, I. You know, yes, I order comics off of Amazon mm -hmm. now. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't go get my weekly comics. I don't read weekly comics right. anymore. But, you know, when, to get my Magna and stuff, I go off of Amazon. I get a lot of things off Amazon because I get the free shipping and I get, you know, different perks off of it. Okay. And also, 
if things are grouped together, mm. it makes you know. There's just tools on there okay. that you can use. So let me ask you this: This is my turn to interview mm-hmm. you right here. Okay. <laughs> when you go on there, or whatever, is this something particular that you're looking for? Usually, yes, but not always, like like today. I was looking for a new stand. I don't know what kind. I don't know what company I'm buying it from. Mm-hmm. From. Okay. I'm just looking for that that type of thing. Okay, with the stand, now that's kind of general, whereas with the comic book, you're more specific. Right. And usually, that's why I say, you know, when you go on, yeah. on to some, a site like, say, Comixology, nothing taken away from anybody's work with Comixology, right. I feel that it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's kind of like mm-hmm. being at a comic book store, you know, to some degree. Now, we're looking at, okay. you know, general comics. You know, if you're coming into, say, uh, Detroit Comics to look for dreadlocks or whatever, and it is in there, like just say that's the case, even though he's closed now. It's so full of Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, IDW, Vertigo, and everything mm-hmm. else. You don't even know when you're going to see a dreadlock. Oh, there it is, right there in the corner. This is the same thing with Comicsology and Amazon. Unless you know Except specifically, you can, what could you get for. cheaper shipping if you buy, you know, okay, I oh, want yeah. dreadlocks, but then I want also this and this and this. You would get cheap, cheaper shipping, but to think about it, you wouldn't get dreadlocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you would get the cheaper shipping, but you wouldn't get dreadlocks because uh, of the fact that I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm just saying, promoting yourself, putting putting more of it out there. No, yeah. I don't think it would hurt. No, it it, it probably wouldn't. I don't think it would. But I will have to really be promoting that really more and more and more. But see, now I'm mm-hmm. in the process of working on a new website. So yeah. with that being said, I'm going to be promoting that more and more and more anyway. Right. So right. it's going to have the PDF files where I don't have to go through anybody's networks to sell my digital comics. Right. I can sell my digital comics right there on UrbanStyleComics.com. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like when you're teaming up with other people, because what if you all, you know, what if someone wants to like, OK, I won't put a website together and I want I think Urban Style Comics works really well. You know, you got dreadlocks and this character over here work mm. very well. I want to team them. You know, I want to make a team up thing um, instead of putting, you know, you could put them both on the wish list. These mm. this is my wish list where I want to buy. It's all one spot. Right. That's what you I know. use my wish list for. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, Media Lure Sandwich apparently has a wish list. I created it. I, I don't think I've ever advertised it. I might put it up somewhere, but we, we, Media Lure Sandwich does have a gear wish list somewhere. I forgot what's on it. But. See, and just maybe a minute ago, Toad, and you brought up a great um, point here. It seems like you're collabing a lot to get your comics and your videos out there. Correct. Um, how much work goes into getting the right people together to collab with? With different collaborations that I've been doing, you know, it goes into what you spoke on earlier yeah. as far as uh, the Amazon and Comixology or whatever. A lot of them, they may use Comixology. Mm-hmm. So with the collab, that's when the dreadlocks may be a part of that or wh- whatever character I use may be a part of their universe and it's part of Comixology that way. But as far as sole possession of the actual character and you being able to get all 13, 14 books, you would have to go to certain sites like okay. PeepGameComics.com. You got AfroComics.com. And you can get digital versions of the book. You wouldn't get the physical hardcover. Right. But as far as collaborations, I've done those and they are on um, the Comicsology. Yeah. You, you want to keep that exclusivity. Are, are, you right. af- are you afraid of losing something? No, it's not that I'm afraid of losing anything. I just want to make sure that, you know, I have everything. You know, I don't want right. to well, I don't want to have everybody, you know, you have to pay an artist, you have to pay, mm-hmm. you know, uh well, I don't use colors or whatever. I got one getting ready to come on board now that's all cold, but me, I'm not gonna speak on her right now. But needless to <laughs> <say, laughs> Needless to say, you don't wanna be paying out so much and not get anything back. Right. You know what I mean? That's the whole thing. You know, if I'm you know, Using the middleman, such as Comicsology or whoever, I'm just gonna call them the middleman. Okay. I have so distributors, much to do. Yeah, third party distributors. Right. I have to deal with so much as far as dealing with them per se. Right. That that's more coming out of my. Pocket. I'd rather deal with them, than deal with Diamond personally, but. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's kind of like dealing with Diamond though. Okay. You know, it's basically the same. Since you did bring that up, so mm-hmm. it's basically the same. So. Some people do use uh, Comixology, but if you look at the format that that uh, Diamond had pre- with the preview magazines, 
the same thing. Most of their advertisement, as far as books are concerned, are of the mainstream books. Mm -hmm. They're not of independence, whether you're white, black, Puerto Rican, whatever. It's not of the independence. Mm -hmm. It's just of the mainstream books. That's the issue that, that, that I have right there. Okay. Is stop promoting the mainstream. We know they're out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, start promoting the independence out here. Then, you know, maybe I'll jump on board with it. But unless you're putting the heavy dollars into your promotions and your... Well, I, I know a lot of independent authors that live off of Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I'm not putting anyone, you know, anything that... I think it's fantastic. You got a point of view that I have not heard. Okay. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, You know, so, you know... So I'm just trying to figure out that the main thing is you just don't want to deal with it. You have you already have an outlet. Why involve other people? You don't want to deal with it at well, this time. You never time. know. One day I may involve more people or whatever yeah. or more companies. When you start making enough money to hire a crew to, to deal with it for right. you. That's when you're dealing with those conspiracy theories oh, and the big oh. brother type thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, now we have control over what Andre Bats puts out. We don't want well, that's Andre more distribu <laughs> distributing. Yes, I've noticed, Andre. You do not have the comic book code on here. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. you must you must have your free freedom of speech going on in here. Ooh. No, you got to see Mark got it. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. See. Comic book code. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be something that was major back in the the eighties and the seventies. Mm -hmm. you know, it was it was major back then because every book that I bought. When I think back on it, it had that little horseshoe thing in the little corner. It was a comic book code. You couldn't even put out a comic book unless you used the comic book code. Oh, man. But, yeah, things to change. A whole and, lot. And totally sub got to support your independent artists. I mean, oh, you have to. I mean, just just even going to the trade shows and looking at the at the work, you will want to spend money in something. And for people like us that go to twenty plus trade shows and cons a year, it's tough not to <laughs> of, not to want to not afford the next one. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. so many fantastic ones. And remember, turtles. We are sponsored by Turtle Trinkets. Uh, um, so if you want to spend all your money uh, at a trade show, go see Turtle Trinkets because. Man, he goes to any trade show he goes to. People find what they're, what you know, something that they're looking for. Turtle trinkets, unlimited fidget spinners. <laughs> I don't think that that's their actual tagline. I know, but you know, they, yeah, they and got they're some actually cool leaning stuff. back from the fidget spinners a little bit because they're not selling as as much. So that so they're they're looking at all sorts of different. Little it was the fad of things. seventeen. <sighs> Hey, I got my fidget spinners. I love them. I got a nice Green Lantern fidget spinner that's fantastic. And I know someone that is from, you know, I'm sure someone has looked at these pictures of dreadlocks. And, and they got to ask, the, I got to ask the Green Lantern question. Uh-huh. I do it all the time. But what's mm -hmm. your question, though? My question <laughs> is, how much did you derive from Green Lantern for dreadlocks? None. Okay. Green Lantern, see, this is the thing right here. Green Lantern. Drew from dreadlocks, but Green Lantern's been around. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, besides Scott Allen, that's a totally different costume. Um, you know, but Hal Jordan's been around. How long's been? Hal, uh, hey, William, you're on the Googles all the time. So I'm, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna explain it, it to look you. Up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys Green go ahead Lantern. and get it in. I'm about to okay, okay, it to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna do our amateur search because I know you've been through this conversation more times than you well, can no, remember. Not, not really. This is actually the first time that I've been interviewed and that question's been popped. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you guys <laughs> pull up Google and everything. And all right, all right, all right. To all right. You. When, when did Hal Jordan come into uh, uh, the modern Green Lantern? Uh, it wasn't on page one. I got. <laughs> October 1959. Really? Green yeah. Lantern. Green, 1959. No, 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 Hal Jordan, not Green Lantern, because oh, Scott no. Allen had a different uniform. Yeah, when did the Green yeah. Lantern Green? Well, Green Lantern. well, Green Lantern was fifty nine, but Green but, Lantern appeared in the nineteen forties. Hal Jordan, October of nineteen fifty nine. Okay. And then the uh, now, I don't know if that was the that. costume, though, because yeah. we're mostly talking about the costume. Yeah, oh, okay. we're talking about the costume. The okay. costume didn't come around till maybe the late 90s. It's, it's, do you have a picture of his original costume on there? That one? No, the, no that's oh, modern. That. That's, oh, that's well, you can even show that one because, you know, the original costume, you had the white boots. 
Okay. And when you because, show this, uh, make sure you point it at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> because this is all green. This is as green as green can be. Go costume. to the original costume. Legend. History. And and also, it looks here. like dreadlocks uh, is, is out of Egypt then. Well, we're going to get into that. Mark, Mark kind of jumping the gun go, a little you bit. You know, go <laughs> for it. Educate us. Okay. I, 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 yeah. I've already wasted some time here. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> this is the thing right here with uh, Green Lantern, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought that up, and I have to share it with everyone all the time. And now that we're live on, on the air and everything, I can share it with you guys. We're not live. We're pre-recorded, but okay, close that's, enough. That's even better. <laughs> but needless to say, when I created Dreadlocks, it, it, Green Lantern had nothing to do with the... Uh, Creation because if you look at the chest of dreadlocks, it's mm -hmm. a symbol of an ankh, which is an Egyptian cross, which yeah. is for eternal life. Mm -hmm. That does not match up with the ring image that the Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, any of them have. That's that's a, that's aliens. Though. Yeah, those that's are yeah, yeah. It's, it's different symbols. It's a different symbol, but none of them have the ankh mm -hmm. in particular, right? Right. As far as the green, and as far as in the suit is concerned, like Mark brought up earlier. He's as green as you're going to be. And green represents all green. land and fertility for the most part. That's what it represents. It represents so money. Money, money, when money, money. When you have the unk, the unk actually blends in with the darker greens of the actual all right. suit. All right. Now, with the Green Lantern characters, his colors were always, I think, black, white, and green. Yeah. They were never like this. But see, the image of the unk blends in with the suit so well, a lot of people... Right. Gets it, they get it mixed up, and they're like, wow, that's a Green Lantern. No, look at it carefully. Look at it carefully, and you'll see the difference. And now when the Green Lantern suit changed, it seems like to me that their scouts, DC scouts or whoever, they're out there at these comic book conventions. Yeah. They see what different people are doing and what they like, and they take it, and they intertwine it into their characters to bring them more up to date. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I see Green Lantern with an updated suit in maybe 2000. It may have been late 90s, mm -hmm. 2000, somewhere yeah, that, it, around uh, that range. Yeah, the sleeves all became green. Exactly. So dreadlocks had already more of been a bodysuit, uh, right. such as dreadlocks there versus um, sort of pieced together. Then which, there's the educational factor right mm -hmm. there. Okay, which, which, which also brings me around to, have you gotten your characters copywritten? Yeah, they were copywritten back in the... The night, early 90s. Okay, right on, yeah, right on. That was the first thing I did. Fantastic. You know, you can't even put anything out. For everyone out there, go to the website and get a VA, Visual Arts, copyright yep, for one. your character before you go around showing off, oh, look at my original creation, and have somebody rip it off. You copyright your original mm -hmm. creation first. VA, government copyright. And you can do it online right now. Yep. Back then, we had to send it by mail, and it would take us six months before it was actually copyrighted. We yep. had two ways of doing it. We had what we called the poor man's copyright as well as mm -hmm. the VA, and we sent both of them in. Yeah, one in an envelope back to ourselves that's yep. still registered. And I still and have that yep. to this day. I got a few also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, needless to say, now we see where Green Lantern, I'm going to say it just like this, bit off dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's there's a couple stories like that. It, if people are curious about another story like that, they can always uh, come uh, look up and compare uh, Luke Cage to the um, oh, what's the name? Uh, so it starts with an S. The the um, um so about the modern Luke Cage. Yeah, modern Luke Cage. Uh, comparing to uh, um the the. Ah, uh, um, the uh, the good um, Samaritan, Samaritan, the good oh, yeah. Samaritan. Yeah, I think it's just called Samaritan. Yeah, there there's some conspiracy theories on that. But I just had to explain that to people sometimes that no, look at it carefully. It's not Green Lantern. You just see a lot of green, and all of a sudden, you yeah, green yeah. Lantern. look at the years. I mean, it's you see one body suit, and you see another body suit. It's a body suit, right? They, and they share the same, you know, similar colors. Deadpool and Spider Man. It's like, you know, right, yeah. there's yeah. only so many ways you could do a, do, do do a, a body, body suit. suit right. Now you know there has been a lot of debate. Green Lantern does not have the trade. abs that Dreadlocks has. Not that that fine no. detail no, is amazing. <laughs> but ba back to what I was going to bring up, there has been debate over the past in the graphic design community whether or not you can trademark a color. And when it gets down to it, that seems almost like something that's 
too much hassle in court unless you have deep pockets. And yes, you can trademark a color, but yes, it's got to be a unique color, yep. uh, one that's not already trademarked right. or is considered a, a general. Uh, most colleges, believe it or not, because um, I used to work at a university, yeah. their color actually, you know, if you're going to the use brand. their color, it had that, you know, they will give you the exact codes yep. that you had yep. to yep. use. That's the way it is right. with the Kiwanis, with GM, with Ford, mm. Chrysler, BMW, yep. it's an exact McDonald's. color, and it's usually it's called that company color, you know, because it, it, it's trademarked. And yep. I, I don't know the way to go through this, but I'm sure you got to have money. That, that makes sense. <laughs> You know, if you don't want anything to be in the likeness of what you're actually doing, mm -hmm. you want to trademark the color. But it should be a color that you've created yourself. It shouldn't be a basic blue, basic green, basic purple, basic black. Mm -hmm. Those colors have already been in existence. So how are you going to copyright something that's already been out there? Right, True. especially if you're doing like like comic book. You know, you're also reflecting from light because in different. Right. You know, when you're in a dark spot, your green's not going to be as bright. It's going to be, you know, unless it's a glowing source. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another Green Lantern reference. Mm -hmm. But if it's not a glowing source, it's it's going to it's going to be a darker green. Right. So there's no real point in just trademarking that. I, I don't. You know what? Right. Don't listen to me. I'm not a lawyer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> don't listen to me whoa, whoa, on whoa. any legal things. <laughs> And by the way, you'll find all your answers. If, if you want, if you have questions, better yet, just go to MediaLitterSandwich.com and leave a message and we'll point you in the right direction. Best way is actually going to the Facebook group on Media Litter Sandwich. That way other people are seeing it and maybe someone there is more knowledgeable than They'll us. They'll chime in. We will look at it and we will probably respond. But, you know, when it comes to different questions, I like to put it in a group because, yeah. you know, just because I have an answer or one William has an answer or Mark has an answer. Someone else, someone else might see it might know more than we do. I mean, I don't. Someone yeah. else might be able to better comprehend your question. That right. too. Right. And answer it. Boom. Or at least give you something more to think about. <laughs> I mean, it goes back to when you're editing and, you mm -hmm. know, there, there, there's Same. more than one way to do things. Oh. Uh, you're right. Yeah. You're you right. Know, I used Several to teach ways. Adobe Premiere and I used to teach a... Uh, um, um, Final Cut Pro as well. I'm like, okay. this is this is the basic way. This is the way the university wants me to teach you. I can show you how I do it. I'm going to tell you right now, there's at least seven more ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And you might find a way that suits you better, that's more comfortable for you or works better with your style or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you might end up doing something where you have to do it another way. You know, it just, you know, it, it's just playing with the programs and learning them. Yes, it is. So um, what? where do you see Dreadlocks going here in the future? Let's let's flash forward uh, a year or two. Where do you want to see Dreadlocks happen? Well, I may, uh, well I'm going to take Toten's advice and see what can Amazon cos uh, Cosmology uh, do for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do your research. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yep, and I'm um, sure you, you and you know people that use oh, them. Yeah. So you know, I know several people that use it, and I've been trying to see how has it helped them. Uh, some has helped, some it hasn't, but that may depend on the product <laughs> that they're putting mm -hmm. out as well. Yeah. I have a very powerful product, I feel. So I think that if I did put it on one of those networks or whatever, I could really um, do big things. Mm -hmm. But I'm planning on connecting with several. Um, digital formats or whatever. Animation is awesome. a big thing. I got to get the uh, animated movie done uh, the way I want it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at live action sooner or later. Uh, gaming, I'm looking at that. That's a project that I'm working on right now. Oh, there's so many great local uh, people that write games and... and mm -hmm. Oh man, you okay. gotta start. So you know, that's what you need to do. You need to set up at a, one of these gaming conventions. Right. That way you can, you know, maybe you can find someone you can spitball off of. Correct. So I'm looking at that right now as far as gaming is concerned. I'm looking at uh, just basically merchandising character uh, overall. As you can see, I have the Dreadlock t shirt. This is just one of many. Oh, oh yeah. So you Sweet. can go on uh, Pop Art Gear and find uh, several comic book creators on there to have their stuff on there. Uh, Pop Art Gear, they have all of the Dreadlock t-shirts. 
superherohuff.com, you know, I'm starting to do what we call uh, all over print t shirts, mm-hmm. uh, merchandising and animation, live action. That's the future for uh, Urban Style Comics and Dreadlocks okay. in general. Are there any other projects you're working on? Yes, I'm working on a, a project called Black Watch right now. Uh, it's kind of on the back burner a little bit. Um, it's my superhero group that I have more like the Avengers type, um, uh, JLA a little bit, but more like mm-hmm. Avengers. Um, currently working on, um, well, Jihad AD. That's another project that I'm working on. Man, the, I have seen the art on your Facebook yeah. for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and right now I have, a uh, my latest project is a solo project for my character, Queen Nubia. She looks awesome too. No, her project is all done as far as the black and whites are concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what I was saying a minute ago as far as I uh, got the dope colors, about to jump on board. She's going to color the whole book. And I think she's been waiting on this project now for about two or three years. And I finally got it done, and she's like ready to jump on it. Oh, who's and, she? Who's she? Uh, 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 on your work? I, I can't name her name okay. just yet, you know, uh, but. She's done some colorizations for me oh, in the past. Fantastic. And she's just awesome. That's all I can say. She's okay. beyond awesome. All right, so I do so, have, yeah. we're, we're running out of time, but I do have to ask this because I'm sure someone's listening to this has this question. Um, you know, because um, you're going to talk about this. You're going you're gonna to be at a convention. You're going to be in the front of the stage. It's going to be, you know, 30, 40 people out there, and someone's going to stand up. Um, just like in Chasing Amy, and ask you, what's a Nubian? (laughs) (laughs) It's had to be asked. Come on, it's great. (laughs) It's a Kevin Smith reference for for people that don't know. See, see, there's a lot of people that don't know or whatever. You know, um, a Nubian is, actually, Nubia is where Kemet slash Egypt first started. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, before Egypt was even in existence, it all started in Nubia and progressed further north into what we know of today as Egypt. So that's the people that populated that land, or whatever it was called, Nubians, whatever. You know, they were they were from a land called Nuba. There was part of the Sudan region and what we know of today as Egypt. You know, back, you know, those days they called it Kemet. That's what Nubia is. But in the reference to in my books or whatever, mm-hmm. a lot of times I use these land masses or countries as planets. I don't use them as the actual land mass. Like, say, Nubia, actually, I got her representing a, uh, uh, not a continent, but a planet called Nuba, mm-hmm. which is short for Nubia. That's what it is. A Nubian is someone that looks like me, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, you're driving from the old conspiracy theory that goes aliens, because there's a lot of Egyptian names you're bringing up, and Egyptian what? symbols. Well, I can't. I, 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 let me let me back. I have up. to read the books, don't I? Let me understand. Your, <laughs> let me understand your question. Okay, first. okay. Right, you're, you're deriving a lot of your your symbolism from mm. um, Egyptian, you know, history and artifacts, mm. and, and at least some of the culture, at least you okay. know, in ancient Egypt. Well, a lot of it is driven from that, but that's you have to understand. I've been doing a lot of research since the late '80s, mm-hmm. mid '90s, so it's nothing like. Oh, I'm just popping up, and I'm what they call woke. It's none of that. Mm-hmm. This is something that I've been studying for years. That, needless to say, with my culture, my culture is throughout the world itself. But see, All my right. culture actually starts right there in Africa, the southern half of Africa. We migrated mm-hmm. into Kemet, which you know of as Egypt, Nubia. We migrated that way. Then we migrated throughout the other continents. So, mm-hmm. my choice, in the sense of what I decided to based a lot of my stories off of was my fascination with Egypt. Mm -hmm. And by me studying so much of it and me being so fascinated with it, I ended up being stuck with that for a certain time frame. Whereas now I branch out in other areas of of, uh, the Americas, the early Americas with Kexico, you know, um, the gods of the Aztec, Olmecs. I migrated into I've seen Legends of Hidden Temple. Oh wait, no, that's Omac. My yeah, bad. Omac. I get into that a little bit as well <laughs> okay. because you know we were everywhere, so therefore I'm bringing a lot of it to a, to the forefront. But at the same time, I can only do so much with one character, so I have right. other characters to tap into the other uh, energies. 
That's Andre, awesome. Andre, I got a question for you. Are, you. are you familiar with the Kingstone? The Kingstone? That was unearthed that gave the list of uh, rulers pre-flood. Mm-hmm. Now, I've heard something like that as far as the, pre, the uh, pre-dynastic pre kings. Yeah. I've, I've heard something like that, but I'm not familiar with it. I haven't seen any. Check it out, um, man, because it would fit in with dreadlock, like okay. really, really well, man, because it shows that some of the rulers pre-flood mm-hmm. were actually in power, okay, get ready, for 50,000 years. How can someone live that long? Oh, right. Yeah, you that's know? amazing. But when you say pre-flood, what flood? Before you know? Noah's flood. Okay. Uh, Which, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to say nothing about <laughs> that because I just learned some more stuff about Noah's flood. But I, I'm, uh, there were floods I'm, all over the world. Well, I'm oh, not gonna man. Get and yeah, but that I'm story was <laughs> based off of another story and, long before yeah, that. And Egypt and, and stuff. Uh, and they'll even say the Grand Canyon wasn't due to over time. It was the draining of something. I'm going to so, pull that up, Mark. I'm yeah, but look it up. it up. You know, right. the, the mm-hmm. King's List. But that's basically that's what Nubian, what a Nubian is. Right. We have Nubians walking throughout the world. And they don't even know they're Nubians. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just here. <laughs> and and if you want to see something else, just Google or go on YouTube and uh, uh, search uh, "Chasing Amy." What's a Nubian? Um, <laughs> that, thank you for coming on, man. I've been looking forward to getting you hey, on I'm here for a while. I'm, yeah, we've been talking about it for a minute. I'm glad <laughs> I was able to make it out here this time around. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, where can they check you out again? Yeah, you can check me out at UrbanStyleComics.com. Or you can go to Motor City Black Age of Comics 2016. Why 2016? Why can't it be Motor City Black Age of Comics? Well, I had to revamp the website because okay. somebody tried to get in there. And, uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Not, man. Enough, not, not another uh, bum deal with a web <laughs> yeah. designer. Right. Well, it was, oh. wasn't a web designer. This was just somebody out there. Uh, I've had that happen on the website. Oh, Somehow hacker, found yeah. a way to get into the website. Oh, so. Man. I had to change it due to passcodes and things of that nature, password. Mm. So needless to say, like I said, UrbanStyleComics.com. You can get uh, the digital formats on uh, PeepGameComics.com. And you can go to AfriComics.com. All right, fantastic. Uh, Mark, where where can people find you? Oh, over at CrazyMark.com. But it's always, always all about William at... All about William.com. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Toden from Toden.com, YouTube.com slash Toden K. This episode was sponsored by Turtle Trinkets. You can find them on Facebook. Uh, I'm sure you get some ideas for some cool stuff looking through them. Or try to find what trade shows he's gonna be in. I'm sure you can find what trade shows, you know, you're gonna be at Urban Style Comics. Right. Um, which th- there are at a billion of them. Same thing with us. And you can find <laughs> what trade shows we're at at MediaLitterSandwich.com. But you may have better luck looking at our individual websites because individually we are at a lot of cons. Oh, yeah. What cons do we have coming up? We have uh, LTU Anime Con on yep. uh, Lawrence Tech uh, University campus. That's April 21st. Um, and now at this point, I'm going to forget what, where the other dates are because we got a couple <laughs> coming up. Um, we got Motor City Steam Con. That's in July. 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 We had Down River Con this, I believe, the second and third of June. Is that correct? Um, something like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also be at Pingua Con, which okay. is in May. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll be presenting. Uh, at least William and I will be presenting at Pingua Con. Um, and um, I'm sure we're going to be. At, I, I I'm I'm forgetting one or two. I'm Pingua sure. Pingua Con is the weekend of the fourth and the fifth. Of what course. about the yep. uh, Con? Are you guys going to be there? Well, that's the same weekend as. Uh, now that he said it, is the same weekend as LTU. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we had had plans for LTU. Um, I'm an alumni, yep. and we will okay. be speaking at LTU uh, and we'll make there. mention. And I know there's a few other ones that we want to look into, and we might be at individually. Um, we might be at the one in a, uh, April 7th for the yep. uh, in Flint. The horror yep. con. Um, no, it's like Fool's Day. The, 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 the horror market or the horror festival mm. is another one, and it's okay. usually – later down the road but anyways we always have a ton of stuff going on so make sure to check out the websites thank you for listening thank you for watching and may, may the, the algorithms, algorithms be in your, your favor, favor.